Hello everyone. In this video, I'd like to talk about the microbiome and your mental health. Uh, because the microbiome impacts so much of our health and potential disease states, uh, it, it seems that you could almost put any disease, any uh, physical issue uh, after the microbiome and there'd be some sort of link. So it should not surprise us that uh, mental health is related to our microbiome. The, what my pattern I, that I like to do is to help my family and friends uh, with their gut testing. So they will do a gut test and then I have been suggesting that they take HMO, human milk oligosaccharide from layer origin, and then do a second test after about seven weeks, which is a, a, about a container of HMO, and then compare the differences. And in this case, uh, I was uh, assisting a friend who believes that HMO helped him, uh, we would say broadly in the mental health area, he, in two ways, he had uh, seasonal affect disorder, SAD, and uh, HMO helped with that to some degree, and also helped with his mood regulation. He felt like his mood was, was more even out um, while he was on HMO. And uh, I have found that out of the six people I, I have helped test so far, that his results were the most dramatic of the six. Uh, they weren't some of the highest numbers that I've seen, uh, but the largest and most important changes uh, that I have seen. So I'm just gonna walk through, first of all, some thoughts about the microbiome and mental health, and then I will show you his results and how it relates. First of all, uh, how is there a connection between the microbiome and our mental health? Well, that's because there is a connection between our gut and the brain called the gut-brain axis. And I think we understand that the brain can impact our gut. You know, the old classic illustration of you're, you're very nervous, you're very sad, and you're, you feel it in the gut, don't you? Uh, but what we don't realize, many of us, is that the gut also impacts our brain. In fact, uh, it's really a super highway between, th along the vagus nerve uh, between our gut and our brain. And uh, they both communicate with one another, but about 70%, so the majority of the communication is going from the gut to the brain. Uh, so what's happening there? Well, in the gut, of course, trillions and trillions of bacteria, and some of the metabolites of these bacteria, or rather I should say some, some metabolites of some of the bacteria, uh, produce neurotransmitters, such as serotonin, GABA, dopamine, acetylcholine, etc. So they're produced in the gut and then picked up by the enteric nervous system and then carried along on the vagus nerve into the brain. Uh, and amazingly, serotonin, somewhere between 90 and 95% of serotonin uh, in your brain is actually produced in the gut. So uh, that's, that's an amazing uh, fact. And this whole research of the microbiome and the brain, which relates, of course, to our mental health, uh, the, the earliest book that I'm familiar with is called The Second Brain by Michael Gershon. And that sort of set the, the foundation for this research. And now this chart shows all of the uh, research papers that exist now in the exponential growth. And this is just in the area of the microbiome and the brain in related uh, uh, issues such as mental health. So it's growing exponentially. And I would guess if you put any other uh, category of, of microbiome uh, study or just microbiome research in general, uh, on a graph like this, you would see a similar exponential growth. So that's exciting. Uh, we know an awful lot about the microbiome, but uh, these uh, studies demonstrate we, there's, there's an awful lot we don't know. And uh, that is very much true for me as well. Uh, I, I not only don't have all the answers, I don't even know all the questions asked sometimes, but so this is just my journey in trying to understand uh, the microbiome, gut health, and how it applies. Now, this is a fascinating chart. This is a chart of uh, children age uh, 0 to 18 who were diagnosed with ASD, or Autism Spectrum Disorder. And you see that of uh, the participants at the baseline of week zero, uh, approximately 90% of them had a diagnosis of Autism Spectrum Disorder. And after two years of a treatment, that number dropped almost by 50%. Uh, 
Now, can you imagine if this were any other disease state, if we uh, could, could demonstrate that uh, heart disease drops by 50%, that all cancer drops by 50%, that diabetes drops by 50%, it would be all over the pages, uh, plastered all over the pages of every uh, news uh, show and outlet. And, uh, and, and this, this is just one study, of course, and this relates to gut health. This, these, these participants were not on any supplements per se. In fact, they received what is called an FMT, a fecal microbiota transplant. And it is exactly as it sounds. The uh, stool of a, of a donor, a highly screened healthy donor is then transplanted or transferred to the recipient, either through an enema or through capsules. And in this case, there were not only improvements, but steady improvements. You see over week 10, week 18, all the way to, to two years. And I don't recall uh, how long the FMT uh, process lasted is usually uh, five to 10 of those. I'd have to uh, review that again, but amazing, amazing results uh, from that. So uh, this video is not about FMT per se, uh, but when you take, when you radically change someone's microbiome as happens through FMT, uh, you, you, you see the impact. Uh, I'm trying to demonstrate here the impact of the microbiome on the brain, on things like mental health. Uh, and if you want further information about FMT, I would uh, recommend you check out Lindsay Parsons' website, her blog, High Desert Health, and specifically this posting uh, from August of 2020. Is FMT a panacea for all that ails you? And what she's done in this particular uh, uh, podcast is uh, review all of the people that she's interviewed that have, uh, that have had FMTs, some of them uh, professionally, some of them uh, on their own, and there's some remarkable stories there. And Lindsay gives some uh, some some good summary and con conclusions, her own opinions on it. So that would be a helpful place to look as well. So I want to specifically talk now about LPS uh, and mental health. And LPS is a is a toxin. It's lipopolysaccharide, and it exists on the cell wall of gram-negative bacteria. And uh, here's a conclusion of the study. In conclusion, we found that the that basal levels of inflammation and LPS-induced inflammatory markers predicted the course of individual depressive symptoms, especially those related to the construct of sickness behavior. Sickness behavior, just another way of saying some sort of mental health uh, issues. And uh, LPS is an inflammatory toxin. I've talked about this in, in, in most of my videos and it travels, it, it, it comes from the gram-negative bacteria. And when the tight junction, junctions of the colon are opened, the, the, the epithelial cells, colonocytes, it goes in the bloodstream. It can travel anywhere throughout the bloodstream, including the brain. And what they're saying is that LPS is, uh, is uh, causing inflammation, uh, which can lead to things like a depression, other mental illness. So keep that LPS in mind here is now I move into my friend's results. So uh, he um, has had only taken, he had never done a gut test before. He'd never been on any sort of supplements like this before. And so he was on uh, HMO from Layer Origin. Now, normally, and this is what I always try to do is uh, get the gut test and then go on HMO. Well, that's what we try to do, but there was a problem uh, with his first gut test. So he sent it in and then started an HMO and didn't realize that, that uh, there was a problem with it until after he had been on HMO for a couple of weeks and then, and then uh, quickly retested. So the fascinating thing here is that all of his results were probably uh, worse than what is indicated here. So th this is the, these results, the first test are after about two weeks of already being on HMO. So I can't prove it, but my guess is it would be even worse than what we see here. So these are his gram negative results, which started again, in his first test, but about two weeks after HMO, um, uh, about 65% uh, gram negative, and then all, went all the way down to about 15%. And by the way, all of these charts I'm going to show you are uh, from Biomesite website. They have a powerful software. You can upload most uh, gut tests. If you don't get a gut test through Biomesite, 
uh, such as I use Ombre. Uh, you can upload the files from Ombre to Biomsite, and they just have uh, fantastic software which gives these comparisons. And you can do uh, one, two, however many tests you do, it'll put it on a graph like this and continue to graph it out for you. So when you see gram-negative going, gram-negative bacteria going down like this, think LPS is also decreasing. It, it just has to. Um, LPS is from gram-negative bacteria and you have fewer of them, you have less LPS in your colon. And then in theory, if you have leaky gut, less LPS throughout your bloodstream, throughout your organ systems. And uh, also the thing to remember about LPS is not only does it cause uh, inflammation throughout the body, but it itself can open up a tight junction. So it can, uh, it's opportunist, opportunistic, it can slip through a tight junction, a leaky gut, if you already have that. It can also in uh, right amounts can create a leaky gut. It can open a tight junction. So uh, it's, it's doubly dangerous in that regard. Here, uh, some more results. And I think this is one of the most significant ones. Uh, proteo, my friends, proteobacteria, levels. He was at about seven and a half percent. It dropped down to almost 1%, as low as 1%, uh, which shows here went from the 89th percentile to the 10th percentile. Now, proteobacteria is a gram-negative bacteria, but it's an especially bad gram-negative bacteria. Uh, uh, I think it should be said, we talk about LPS. I found some research, research showing that not all LPS is actually bad, that uh, some forms of LPS, and it just depends on the specific chemical uh, makeup, can actually neutralize the, the, the inflammatory LPS, uh, which is why I'll say in a moment that uh, it should be said that not, therefore not all gram-negative bacteria are bad. So it's not as if we want to get rid of every last bit of gram-negative bacteria. Uh, I don't want to uh, communicate that, but proteobacteria is known uh, to be an especially uh, inflammatory type of bacteria and a couple of conclusions here from research papers. Proteobacteria are often over, overrepresented in several intestinal and extra intestinal diseases, mostly with an inflammatory phenotype. Uh, and then uh, uh, second one, therefore the abnormal growth of proteobacteria may rep represent an imbalance in the gut microbial community and be a potential marker of disease risk, uh, which of course would also include uh, risk in the brain and any sort of mental health uh, issues that could result. So that's a that's a huge decrease. Anyone would be happy to see that much uh, that big of a drop in their proteobacteria. Here is his butyrate results, and butyrate is a short chain fatty acid that's produced by uh, some bacteria in your in your gut, and uh, it's it's good because it feeds your colonocytes and heals a leaky gut, gives them gives them the energy that they need. And his result was, was quite low at first, 20%. And this uh, percentages are a factor of the number of butyrate producing bacteria in the gut. So at 20%, uh, it represents 20% of the bacteria in his gut are those that can produce butyrate through the, it's one of their metabolites. But his went from 20% to about 50%, which is just a tremendous uh, growth. So that will bring all sorts of benefits for him. Uh, and then this is a comparison of his uh, Formicides and his Bacteroidetes results. Uh, Formicides are almost all gram positive, positive bacteria and Bacteroidetes are almost all gram negative bacteria. So it just makes sense that as one goes up from 30% to 80%, the other goes down from about 45% to 5%. Now, again, because uh, as I said, not all gram negative bacteria are bad for you. Uh, some people might say, well, uh, there should be a, there's an ideal ratio between Formicides and Bacteroidetes. And uh, this, this maybe is too low of a level of Bacteroidetes. Um, and, you know, it's sort of like everything else in gut health. No one knows for sure what the right right ratio is, the, the ideal optimal ratio, uh, but it is good to understand that in general, the more you lower your gram negative bacteria, uh, the more potential you have for lowering the, the LPS toxin. 
uh, in your system. So that's my uh, take on things. Now, here's an interesting result is acromancia levels. Uh, we, most of you, if you uh, follow gut health at all, understand acromancia is one of those uh, ideal uh, bacteria and everybody seems to want to have uh, some in their gut. And like me, most people seem to struggle to have any at all. But his started at almost 12%. And when I, I got his first test and was viewing it, I thought, wow, that's a, uh, that's a high level. Most people recommend between 1% and 5%. And what also concerned me is not only was it high, but uh, the fact that my, my wife is the only one that had this experience. When she went on HMO, her acromancia went up to 20%. So uh, it just shows you that, that not everybody responds in, in the same way to any given supplement. And, and the same is true here. So I thought, oh boy, at, at almost 12% and now he's an HMO, that's going to go up and it's going to create uh, more problems for him. But, but here it is. It went down into about 5%, which is uh, an optimal level. So uh, I thought that was uh, really interesting. And then finally, his bifidobacterium, uh, it went up significantly. Uh, but it's only at 0.25%. So uh, I think it started at uh, the lower level there was almost undetectable. So it's good to see, and I've always seen this, that even if uh, bifidobacteria doesn't go up to, mine is up to about 8%. Um, if it doesn't go up to uh, 3, 4, 5% or higher on something like HMO, at least it shows, it sort of ignites uh, what's in the gut. And so that's a, that's a positive outcome. And uh, we could see how that will uh, progress in the future, or maybe he'll need a, a bifidobacterium probiotic or something to, to help him boost that, but it, it did increase it uh, significantly. So that is the results of my friend's gut test. And he was thankful. He definitely felt better in those two areas of seasonal affect disorder and mood regulation. And uh, based upon the research, I think we'll see that the microbiome is a extremely important key to understand things like brain health and general mental health. So hopefully that was uh, uh, informative for you. And thanks so much for listening.